Welcome back. This is Gradius with another episode in the San Diego Crusaders franchise. The franchise with a little bit of a different twist. As you all know, we're only allowed to sign veterans age 30 or older. Only allowed to sign them at a free agency. We're not allowed to trade. We're not allowed to draft. And as you can see, the team that we have is pretty good. <laughs> that might be an understatement because we have a fantastic team. We are really very, very good. The team is really great. We are uh, we are a serious contender for the Super Bowl again, and it's not it's not something that is uh, uh, I don't know something that was out of the question because uh, the team that we have now looks very differently than the team we had last season. Do check that out if you want to compare it. Um, but it's just a lot of players uh, retired. We had to go. Uh, and sign new free agents, uh, which is what we did. A uh, few familiar faces are still in here, but a lot of these players just sort of popped up out of free agency on day one of regular season, which is where I get most of the players for the squad always. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we found a lot of very good players uh, that were available. Uh, we were able to backfill the team with solid players. So all of that said and done, this is a really, really very good team. Uh, plus, if you take a look at the cap room, we still have space. And the only reason we still have space is because all of these players are basically on one-year deals. All the players you see here, I snapped up on day one and uh, signed them out of free agency um, on a one-year deal. The main question is, which of these players should we or could we keep? And the big one is, I mean, probably Tyler Boyd, Demarcus Lawrence would be good fits, Keenan Allen, Adrian Amos, everybody that's past 85, I would really consider giving a new deal to. But the big question is, will they regress or won't they regress? And that is something that we just have to take into consideration in this franchise series. I don't think that we can just uh, keep the team together as I probably would in other series. Um, where I try to, to lock down players long term, give them good deals and work work around cap issues as much as I can. Uh, if I were to do that here, and I did that in the first season, take a look at that one. It was bad because I gave players, I think, two or three year deals and they suddenly regress so hard, so hard. Keenan Allen, for instance, uh, I'm sure if I give him a two year deal and he will be down to an 80 next uh, off season simply because of his age, or he will be retiring completely, then it would have been completely for nothing. So anyways, I would probably give good deals to uh, players like this, like Tyler Boyd. He's 31, so he still has two or three playing years ahead of him with an 89, not that bad at the moment. But again, the regression is uh, our biggest enemy. And that is why we have to work season to season basis. Um, the team that we have built here is very solid, very good, very balanced, really liking it a lot. We are a little bit unlucky when it comes to injuries this season uh, because we do have quite a few long-term injuries. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence, only three weeks left. Uh, Zach Martin, six weeks. Jack Conklin, four weeks. So you can see our offensive line is, is, is quite heavily impacted. Um, and Demarcus Lawrence on the left edge position as well. If we hit the playoffs, uh, all of these players will be back available again. So that being said, we're going to take a look at the Eagles uh, now and uh, then set up weekly strategy according to what we can expect from them. Uh, overall, that is all that I will be doing this week. So let's dive straight into the roster. And for your Quebec, we meet again. 27-79, RJ Curley and Clayton Toon, a weird rookie, 26-55, that's an interesting one. Uh, Phil Jurkovic, it has been a very mixed bag for us. He has demolished us <laughs> in some seasons. And in some seasons, we have been rather successful against the Eagles. We'll see what we can pull off. I think that we have a very good defense this year. I think that we can really stop the Eagles in their tracks. As far as the quarterback goes, Phil Jurkovic, he does have his strengths. Uh, we're going to have to be wary of those, of course and especially the performance of the tight ends and wide receivers here matters as well. The running back room is a nightmare to defend against. Bijan Robinson, Miles Sanders, and Nicholas Singleton are the three running backs. Bijan Robinson, one of my favorite all-time players from my Madden 22 and Madden 23 rebuilds. Um, 
he is just so good he was so fantastic for me in all of my uh, uh rebuilds or playthroughs where i used him and that is just basically all i have to say about this player he's fantastic he's an x factor he is still only 23 the texas longhorn lighting up the nfl and uh, i am happy to see him again but i'm pretty unhappy that we have to defend against him the fullback is Stephen Piercy, so here we go. The wide receivers, Devonta Smith, 27.99, AJ Brown, 29.95, Nicole Harden, 28.93. Three fantastic uh, wide receivers at one, two, and three. And then we've got Xavier Worthy, another Texas Longhorn, Cam Patton, and Carnell Tate. Uh, Tate, all right, he's just there as a, uh, as a developmental player. Cam Patton, I'd say decent. Xavier Worthy, I'd say decent still, even if he's an 84. But uh, his age uh, and his, you know, speed acceleration really make him a very dangerous opponent here. Uh, the top three are just fantastic wide receivers. Uh, they are star devs or lower, so that is at least something that will help us a little bit here. The tight end room, we've got Jake Johnson, 2285, James Mitchell, 2780, and Nick Muse, who's 2778. Super solid tight end room, very balanced. Jake Johnson, really like the look of this one, 22 and 85 sadly only a normal dev trade but i don't think that'll be too much of an issue for this player uh, because he's still very young next up let's take a look at the offensive line jordan melata 29 96 and julian armella 22 81 behind him jordan melata one of the very good left tackles in the game i'd love to get him onto the squad next uh <laughs> next year uh during the off season but i think i already checked his contract earlier and he still is on three years. So unless they cut him for some weird reason, um, he will not be available for me. Left guard is Drew Kendall, 2395. That is looking crazy good. Landon Dickerson, 2793. This is a stacked left guard room. Start of trade here for the starter, 95 already. Fifth best left guard in the game at age 23. What a gem. Uh, center is Cam Jurgens, 2786. Behind him, Josh Beretta. I think Cam Jurgens is a super solid uh, center. Good awareness, uh, decent strength for a center, so that works for me. Right guard is Royce Newman, 29.83. Nick Zakelch behind him. Yeah, those are two, uh, I'd say, decent passable right guards. Uh, nothing more to add to that. Um, I don't really want, want to go into more detail on this position here. Right tackle is Blake Fr uh, Fisher, 23 at 83. Behind him, Jeremiah Church. Uh, but we're going to be taking a look at Blake Fisher. Normal death trade, 83 at age 23. This is good. This is not bad. Uh, the run block is something that he will have to work on. But apart from that, his stats are really decent. Um, and if you if you uh, sort of take away the speed, acceleration, and agility, I think uh, I think this is a very solid player. Let's look at defense. Greg Rousseau immediately uh, not so friendly face. I mean, I do like him, of course, because uh, I used him on the Dolphins franchise. He was fantastic there. I like him as a as a player. He's just one of those really nasty, gritty players. But I don't want to play against him, of course. So Nigelin Kelly and Channing Sullivan are here as well, completing the room. But it's Greg Rousseau with the start of trade. That is the real star of the show here. And the power moves, the tackle. Just look at those numbers. The awareness, the acceleration. He's going to be so fast, so good, so hard. Really going to work very hard to, to overcome this one here. Right edge, we've got Josh Sweat. Just uh, not to make things too easy. 29.96 on the right side. Gunnar Givens behind him as a backup. D tackles Jordan Davis, another 90 rated player. 26.99. Travis Shaw and Justin Walford are also here. But we will be focusing on Jordan Davis here with a start of trade. Strength, tackle, block shedding, player recognition. Fantastic numbers for this very, very good player. The linebacking core. We've got Cameron Thomas, 26 at 85 and Max Pearson, both look to be solid, decent players. Um, but uh, nothing more than that, luckily. At mid-linebacker, we have another horror show player, Leighton Van Resch, who started out as a cowboy, so we had him in our grasp, but we had to let him go due to his age, of course. And he will be a free agent, so will Leighton Van Der Esch return to the Crusaders in the offseason? I would like that. That would actually be a nice storyline, wouldn't it? Uh, plus, he fits the bill. Uh, we can work him into the squad. I, I would like that a lot. 
Um, next up, we've got CJ Hicks, 22.87, looking great already. And Leo Chanel, but CJ Hicks, 22 and 87, start of trade. Wow. If I were in charge here, I would already slap him into the starting spot um, to make him grow. Um, Leighton Van Der Esch is a super solid backup, of course. Right outside linebackers, Lon even over, 23.88. And Kaiser White as a backup here. Again, super solid. Um, this is something that I have to say about this Eagles team. There are teams that have fantastic starters and then they have a very quick drop off behind that. This is not the case here. Most of these rooms are very well built and, and, and have a lot of fallback scenarios. So that is something that we will have to really watch out for. Cornerback, Asante Samuel Jr. 2694, Deuce Chestnut 2392, fantastic, uh, a superstar at CB1. A very, very good player at CB2. And then we've got Jalil Hurley, Gentry Williams, and Dylan Austin. As three backup players, I would say Hurley uh, is is good, at least. Uh, Gentry Williams is a standout in terms of his speed and acceleration. Of course, 92, 93, that is very good. Um, Dylan Austin, developmental player, rookie for the future with a normal day of trade. Yeah, that might slow him down a little bit. Free safety, Jabril Peppers, 30 and 89. Aaron Slate behind him. Is Chipril Peppers available for us next year? That would be nice, wouldn't it? Would be a good one. Nope, he's not available. We're going to be facing him here, 89 and 30. And strong safeties. Brandon Joseph, 24, 94. And Joanel Aguero, a rookie. Uh, fun fact, Aguero is... Uh, Kun Aguero, that's the... Uh, is it the son-in-law of Diego Maradona, who is a... Pretty famous uh, Argentinian soccer player. Don't know if you follow along with that, but anyways. Last name of his son-in-law was uh, Aguero, so there we go. <laughs> Fun trivia. Adam Zamaha, 2169 is the kicker. He does have a good kick power, 95. The accuracy, 82. Not that great, but he's not looking... I mean, he's looking a little bit sick right there, <laughs> if you ask me. But he looks very, very good and decent in what he has to do. The kick power is really, really good. And the accuracy will follow over time. So that is good. And at punter, we've got Michael Pilardi and Jonathan Ward as a backup. And that is that. Concerning the Eagles, let us turn our attention towards weekly strategy. Well, we have Phil Jurkovic. We know him quite well. I think the short pass is actually the best bet. For some weird reason, the Eagles have been very hesitant to, uh, to use... Uh, Bijan Robinson uh, and the run game a lot. So that might play into our hands right here. In terms of the offensive game plan, run it outside. I don't know if this is the best idea because they have very fast edge rushers. They're going to catch us. So I think we're going to go with the inside run. Oh, we don't have any targets to hit this week. So we could just uh, audible them uh, whenever we feel like it. And that should, should help us do what we want to do. I'm going for half pads and splits. You might have noticed I want to limit uh, injuries as much as we can. I just don't really feel like that is something that uh, should uh, um, uh, be be worth the risk. Since we were not really hunting for the uh, for the experience points, I will also be uh, looking at these here differently from now on because we have so many points we've got everything upgraded don't really have anything else to do so we're not really up for these points here um and they don't buff as far as i know so the focus of course will have to be um on on the uh, game plan uh, defensive and offensive uh, just so you know, I will be uh, starting training now. I will not be showing you the training results only if there is an injury or something special happening. All right, so I didn't show you the training results. Nothing happened there. Nothing spectacular. No injuries. So we're just going to be going through the players. I was just going to be uh, dishing out the upgrades. Power back for Alvin Kamara to make him even more tough to stop. Alex Kappa will get some more uh, I'm going to give him some more power. I feel like that might be the thing that will benefit him the most um, if we manage to, to, to buff him in that area. Derek Barnett, uh, we're going to put this in a power rusher. He is uh, my backup at right edge. 
And uh, I think he is currently playing as a starter due to the injury for Demarcus Lawrence. And Ibn Ginkel looks like a slimmer form of Alex Kappa, but there you go. Speed rusher upgraded right outside linebacker. He's a backup. Andre Dillard at left tackle. Uh, sometimes gets to play. We're going to buff him up to be a scheme fit, I hope. Is he a scheme fit now? No, not yet. All right, one more is what we need. Uh, we're going to be sorting the depth chart in-game again. Uh, and there's nothing else to do this week apart from play the season game against the Philadelphia Eagles. We're going to be playing away at Lincoln Financial Field. Uh, they seem to be the better team overall with a 95 rating and their defense being tougher than ours. But uh, yeah, we'll just have to see what happens. Mainly, it'll come down to if we can stop fully your Quebec or not. Here we go. Lincoln Financial Field, home of the Philadelphia Eagles, is where we're going to play today's game. And it's going to be an away game, of course. So uh, Jalen Ramsey showing off his season stats, 19 tackles, 5 interceptions. So far, he has been very, very good for us since joining two years ago. Uh, he's a start of trade, which is okay by me, because it means that he's a little bit cheaper uh, than superstars or X-Factors. Um, and here we go. Flyover. And you can see we are lining up in our classic away uniforms. Really liking those a lot. The Eagles coming out in the classic home uniforms in the current ones. So I think it's time to get the game going. Before we do that, though, there's one more short holdup after we stop him at the four yard line. Jesus, man. We're going to be taking a look at the depth chart here and uh, just try to sort uh, the offensive line, build it up as good as we can. Uh, I think it's it's Max Sharping. He can take over that right guard. I want to have Kappa at the central position. Um, and then we have Rob Havenstein over at the right tackle um, instead of the injured Jack Conklin. Uh, on defense, uh, Harrison Phillips, left edge. That absolutely works for me. Um, instead of the injured Demarcus Lawrence, that is, of course, his, uh, his spot. And Derek Barnett is not the starter. That was a mistake by me because Miles Garrett is here. The tackles fully fit. I really like this lineup a, a lot. It is fantastic. And with that being said, we're going to be taken over now here at the four yard line. We're going to start with a run. I just want to test the waters. Just want to see what happens. Do we break through? Do we get far? I think we get five yards. That is, that is good. We're up to the nine yard line now. You can see the notable inactives. Zach Martin, DeMarcus Lawrence, Jack Conklin. I just covered these in the depth chart. And uh, luckily our team is good enough that we can sort of cover that up. And here we go. Oh my lord, Alvin Kamara is through. He is through. Can I get away from Jabril Peppers? Yes, I can. And it is a race now. Deuce Chestnut trying to get me. And we head into the end zone. The San Diego Crusaders score. A fantastic touchdown as Alvin Kamara breaks through from the freaking nine yard line. Take a look at that play. Breaking through and then getting away from everybody. With that speed, Jabril Peppers was very close. I think that outside uh, turn sort of put him off. And then it was a race. Deuce Chestnut luckily not able to catch us. 80 yards on a rushing touchdown. Oh my god. What a great play here. 100 yards rushing distance. I don't know which one it is, but that is fantastic. What a great opening play here by this team. What a great play by Alvin Kamara, who I really appreciate a lot being on my team. Oh my god. That was a very quick one. Can we get away this time? No, we cannot. Uh, the coverage was very good. Second and six, we do pick up four yards. That was great. We had to play it quickly. Josh Allen getting rid of the ball here because the tacklers were coming. And here we go. Left-hand side, number 78. I would have needed you to help out here, but that didn't happen. So Alvin Kamara has to do the hard work himself. 103 yards on the rush. So I think the first one was 80. And uh, we have another 23 yards combined. That was very nice here. Getting rid of two players, actually. Take a look at that one. Bumpity bump. And then, of course, just getting stopped. But that is not too much of a hassle here. We're going to start a play action X dagger here. Looking for Kamara again. 
if I can get Cortland Sutton, that would be nice. Um, I'm not sure if I will be able to do that. But uh, we're going to go the safe catch. Oh, we can't connect here. Second and ten. It's a little bit sad about that one, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, here we go. Dallas Goddard. Left-hand side run. Is uh, my main target. It is looking a little bit light. So it might be possible for us to break through here. And that is what we're going to do. Our offensive line is currently working extremely well. Extremely well. A little bit surprised, to be honest. A little bit surprised. As we finish the first quarter here. With a crazy 116 rushing yards. And 80 came out of one play. Wow, what a good play that was. Jesus, man. All right, Tyler Boyd might be a good option. Cortland Sutton, I don't think we'll go for this one. I want to have a more direct one. So we're going to try to get the four verticals. Alvin Kamara or Dallas Goddard. I think it's going to be Goddard. Nope, it's not going to be. Because number 34 lunges in between, slaps the ball away. Goddard losing a little bit of his speed right there. We're going to try run play here. Those have worked really well. Oh, no, not this time. Not this time. We can't really get rid of the players. I tried going for a stiff arm. But it didn't work. Right, we're going to go with a clear out. Thomas Sutton Goddard. Goddard would be fun, actually, wouldn't it? Here we go. Michael Thomas. Oh, shedding a tackle here. Number 37 has nothing on him. Four and one. That was important. That was very important that he got away from that one. Absolute bullet here. But 37 can't hold on to him. So it pushes that one away. Number 8 does come along. Stops him. So do we take the field goal or do we go for the points? Uh, I think we're going to go for the first. Um, the three points would be helpful, but I mean it's a yard. And we have fantastic Alvin Kamara. And that was the right decision. And we are... I don't know if you can hear me clicking in the background, but I was just going for stiff arm, stiff arm, stiff arm. There you go. First goal at the seven yard line. We are moving forwards ever so slowly, but consistently. And that's what counts to me. I don't need crazy runs and crazy plays all the time, but I definitely want to have. Oh, my goodness. That was a quick run from the outside. Did you see that player? We're going to go with this play here. I want to get Dallas Goddard. Or am I doing this? No, I'm going to go with Kamara, of course. Two yards. And there we go. I didn't even have to, uh, uh, you know, sprint all the way. And there we go. Invisible spike by Alvin Kamara. Because the ball is landing, is, is lying five yards behind him. So there we go. Anyways, it was an open gap. Uh, of course, Jordan Davis tried to react, the, the big D tackle, but he couldn't get into contact quick enough. And there we go. Coach Mike Tomlin can be happy with this one. And there we go. Again, we stopped them. Phil Jurkovic, not really that productive. Let's go with the ace posts. Or is that risky? We're going to try the quick slants. I need to get them, uh, need to get those yards quickly. Michael Thomas reaching ahead, and the gap was there. The offensive line holds, and Michael Thomas proving his value as a wide receiver number two. To be honest, as a wide receiver number one, he was injured too much. So I had other players uh, step in all the time. But uh, this one here is the position for him. I really feel he doesn't get as much as much uh, hits it doesn't get as much traffic here tyler boyd gets stopped after a gain of six yards a halfback slip screen is what we're going to be doing next but to finish the sentence off i think michael thomas is a fantastic wide receiver number two for those for those off plays um but uh, he doesn't have to play in all of those jesus man did you see the stiff arm here wow well done so he can rest the between plays and he doesn't get as much uh, fatigue rating. And I think that is what, what, what basically uh, dragged him down. 
and caused all those injuries. Wow, what a quick one here. Was that Josh Sweat and a timeout called? Wow, what a quick takedown. And that is the reason why I'm not a big fan, why I'm not a big fan of these outside plays. It just takes longer to develop, to get going. You know, going to the outside, the route is way longer behind the line of scrimmage. Number 94. Wow, Josh Sweat. Yes, just here. Make sure I got the right name. At four yards, do we punt? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to trust in our defense that they can do something about uh, about Phil Jurkovic and the offense as uh, we punt the ball away. Rasul Douglas is stopped again. Now, this, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That was uh, almost a, a very dangerous return as our defense heads out onto the field again and will try to stop the Eagles. And they do that. Within seconds, I would like to add, we're going to go with Cortland Sutton here. Might as well go for that one. Or do we have a fantastic play that will break everything? Now we're gonna go with this. I feel I feel confident in this one, right? There we go. Cortland Sutton. We hit him before he gets into the midline backer territory. Well, that was something that I was trying to avoid because you could see late Vadresh lingering there. And I had to get over the head of the other players. But uh, that was not too much of a hassle. I'm not going to pressurize this play here. Not going to use my timeouts. Because at 14 and 0, I don't think that we have to do that. There we go. Cortland Sutton. Great play. Great stop. And we're going to do the first down animation now. At 15 seconds to go. I'm not quite sure uh, if the clock is going to be stopped. Uh, I don't think it will. No, it's not stopped. All right, let's go to the bench switch and it will count down. And we're going to be starting uh, the uh, second half uh, right now. Bijan Robinson, number five. Brief glimpse of him. We're going to keep running it inside. That has worked superbly well. The inside run, outside runs. Uh, yeah. But we're going. I think we're doing the right thing on focusing on the. Uh, on the short pass. Now Rashad Penny gonna be returning the ball here deep into our own into our own uh, end zone. I was trying to get around those players. Didn't worry it didn't really work. Alvin Kamara. 928 yards adding 155 today. He's just a fantastic player. Really really happy to have him. When I signed him I was a little bit hesitant. I was like do I really need to get him? I've got James Con Connor after all. But, and I really love this about the X. Wow, Leighton Van Resch, man. Oh, my God. Anyways, um, what I wanted to say was there's a lot of discussion about if X factors are good, superstar Dave traits are good, abilities are good. I say yes, because we do have players like that in real life as well. Take a look at Patrick Mahomes. Wouldn't you agree that he has fantastic abilities that other quarterbacks don't have? And that it's not all just skill in one area. It's not his throwing. I think he has special abilities. And uh, especially looking, if, if you compare very good quarterbacks, um, they do have... Oh, my God. I thought I was going to get through again. <laughs> but hard hit here at the 49. Well, that's okay by me. A lot of broken tackles. Number one avoided. <laughs> Number one, then number two, but then it's a hard hit coming from the side here. Kabui, who was that? Asante Samuel Jr. All right, 37. Gonna have to remember the number. Um, but he is—he he, has—he's very different in comparison to Jalen Hurts. They're both elite. I would say they're both very, very good quarterbacks. And and looking at the ratings in Madden, they could probably be very similar in their ratings, um, but. Is this, uh, are they going to be the same style? Are they going to have the same abilities? No. So I think the abilities really add to the experience here. And a player like Alvin Kamara, I mean, let's let's be honest about this one. Um, he is a, a very, very good player and just has those extra abilities. 
let's just make him feel more real and that's what it's about i don't care too much about the whole uh unlimited team shebang never really played that not even on fifa um but there we go quick turn with dallas goddard getting the first down that was the target i just think different players have different abilities i think it's a very clever system going with x factor and superstar because players can also gain abilities or lose abilities you can have fantastic players that are very very good have a special ability and then they sort of regress out of that and then they don't have it anymore and that's just realistic you've got the same in real life there's players out there that are that are extremely good at blocking uh, tight ends or something like that and then at some point in time they just lose that age running backs zeke i'm not going to put shade on him uh but he is he's a, he's a very good running back I like him a lot but is he the same as he was a few years ago i would say no and the ability that he had back then he lost that but he's still a good running back so props to you ea i can't wait to see what you're going to be doing with that on madden 24 as we uh get another very good running performance out of our x factor here who was the starting point of my little i don't even know what that was a ramble i guess it was a quick stop here second and ten inside zone left hand side is what we're going to be doing we're edging closer to their uh to their end zone and we will be doing that there we go another great block here number 78 that is Lakin tomlinson he's doing his job today i think he heard what i said last time when i was questioning him a little bit but uh, today oh man alvin kamara is dead tired so what i will be doing now is just going to be replacing him a little bit here with James Conner. We have such good players. We can give him a, a rest here. And uh, there we go. This play, he will have to go for one more yard. Kaboom. I think he still is my power halfback, if I'm not mistaken. But here we go. Inside zone split is what I want to do. There we go. I'm going to adjust with James Conner. Putting the midline backer back a little bit, which is interesting. James Conner, there we go. Quick turn towards the right-hand side, and we are up to the two-yard line. I just I just love that dude to bits. Seriously, he's such a great uh, running back. I loved his performance last season. Super happy that I have him. Super happy that he's still on the team. I have to say, I probably slept a little bit on him. I never used him before. I never had him on my radar, never expected him to be as productive as he was. Um, but yeah, there we go. Let's go with the tight end attack, a second and goal. Am I going to regret this one? I have no clue. Here we go. Here comes the rush. And I'm, I'm not going to regret it. Dallas Goddard gets the ball under control here, despite being covered. A little dance here. I don't even know what that is supposed to be but good one offensive line was collapsing but he got enough distance on it james connor i was waiting if he was gonna uh get uh, towards you right hand side wow phil yurkovic is having a bad bad game jesus man but at least it's realistic for for the time being there we go james connor just such a tough player very gritty and I will not be picking plays where I have uh, where I have Alvin Kamara. I want to rest him a little bit because an injury to him would absolutely suck. That would really hurt us a lot. Michael Thomas, maybe, maybe Cortland Sutton. There we go. Cortland Sutton gets exactly where I want him to be. Center stage. And uh, Josh Allen puts the ball between the two. Uh, between the, the two midline backers. If you watch it closely, you can see that they just move slightly towards the outside. That is the opening that I was waiting for. And boom, we're in. All right, before we do anything else, it is now time at 21-0, fourth quarter. I think we can give some play time to a few other players as well, right? Uh, I will now be resting my starting players um, to just be on the safe side i don't want to risk any injuries um 
and I don't think that this will be a problem in the slightest. Uh, plus, we just give a little bit of a play time to these players. And uh, I'm going to leave Sharping here because he already is my backup player. Havenstein, same thing. All right, so they're just going to have to dive through that. Harrison Phillips, same thing. But we can put Derek Barnett here. That is good. DeForest Buckner will get some rest as I'm putting DJ Reader up top. Uh, what is this going to be? You're going to be using Hayson Reddick here, Anthony Walker and Zach Cunningham, Josie Jewell and uh, Devondre Campbell going to be slotting in here. Here it's going to be Anavin Ginkel and on the corner positions. Going to be using these players here. Just like that. Quandra Diggs taken over from Thornhill. Jimmy Ward taken over from uh, Adrian Amos. And I'm just going to be checking the positions where I don't have anybody else to put in there. I could put DJ Reader here. And that is what I'm going to be doing. Let's put Greg Gaines up top. Left edge is going to be DJ Reader. That works for me. Uh, who else is there? Derek Barnett. We've got Greg Gaines. He's at Reddick. Josie Jewell. All right. These are all replacement players. What about the offensive line? Just bear with me on that one, guys. Don't want to risk an injury to, to, to probably an already a little bit strained offensive line. Uh, but I don't think I have any more options here anyways. Um, players that I could use. All right. So we are going to go with a halfback smash here. Use James Conner. Dak Prescott. Everybody already adjusted to the new setup. And here's James Conner. Getting still back a little bit. Second and goal. All right. Good one by Josh Sweat. No, it's not, it's not Sweat. It was Shaw. Jesus, man. Got the wrong name. There we go. Tyler Higby going to be looking for him with Dak Prescott. Broken up. And I guess you can already feel uh, the difference here. I mean, you, you can probably see the difference i can feel the difference this is uh, exactly what i mean players with abilities uh, like uh, josh allen he's just uh, and that is on the run overthrown we're gonna go for a field goal here could have probably went for running plays but we don't we don't have to pressurize ourselves here wanted to get some pass plays out for dak prescott and for some of those other players the backup wide receivers for instance Keenan Allen, Tyler Boyd, and there we go. We get three extra points, 24 nothing. One more hit, yes. And now the Eagles get on the board, even with extra point attempts, extra point conversions. We are at the 47. We're super far up the field. That was great, great uh, return here. James Conner, let's go. Wow, what a fantastic hit here. Leighton Van Rish. Shrugged aside by James Conner. I just have to say, I really, really love this team at the moment. It is so good. We can even switch and shuffle. We're not even losing too much production. Oh, damn it. Late Madrish went back, plugged that hole in labor. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was a hard one. Sacked, third and 13. I forgot it was not Josh Allen. Dak Prescott is not good when you leave the pocket. Close zone strong. All right, we're going to have to do something clever now. Tight end attack. We're going to go with a boot. Higby, Allen, Boyd. Higby will be the player I have to go for. And broken up. Tyler, man. What you doing? All right, we're going to punt it. Uh, this might not be the best gameplay right now that you'll ever see in Madden, but we are using the backup players. So James Bradbury stopping them back out of the seven. That was a good punt. Appreciate that one. That was really, really nice. Bradbury just snapping it up. No block this time. Let's see what Phil Jurkovec will be able to do at the 24 Halfback, blunt dive, left hand side. Can we get another touchdown? First of all, I just want to get the clock running. And there we go. James Carr. Beautiful run. Great, great blocking here by the offensive line. Mind you, those are 
my backup players. It's not even the starters. So, let's go. Halfback slam using James Conner. But I do want to try the smash drive. Tyler Boyd. Kaboom. Beautiful pass. Great run. And yes, Tyler Boyd is our backup wide receiver. The third in row. But I like him a lot. I really like him a lot. He's a, he's a very good one. Uh, especially on the stretched. Take a look at this. Very good. I love this franchise series, honestly. Uh, I get to know so many players that I would have never gotten to know before. And here we go. Even got Dak Prescott. A few throws and a touchdown. So there we go. Well done, Alec Ingle. Congratulating Dak Prescott. And Phil Jurkovic can't be happy with today's performance. Of course, Josh Allen has the highest rating. Uh, he had a great game. 71% completion rate, 96 yards. 113 is his rating. Uh, Phil Jurkovic here with 43% completion rate. Also a touchdown, about three interceptions. That is dragging it down, of course. 212 yards is actually very good. Dak Prescott, 25 percent completion rate but still higher rated because he got a touchdown <laughs> Alvin Kamara we started this game out with this fantastic run by him and that was that was the first nail in the coffin for the Eagles I would like to imagine 185 yards two touchdowns great job James Conner also chipping in a little bit no touchdown for him Bijan 25 he is not productive Phil Jurkovic on the receiving side, A.J. Brown got 91 yards, McCall Hartman. So the passing was a little bit better on their side of the field, of course, 43 for Bijan. But we got everybody involved. And that is something that I really appreciate. Uh, Tali Higby would have been better, but he sort of fumbled or, or dropped quite a few receptions. Devondra Campbell getting four tackles at midline backer. Uh, total tackle leader, Leighton Van Der Esch. Who else but him? Tackles for loss, three for Josh Sweat. And a lot of sacks, guys. Let's take a look at these. Miles Garrett, 1.5. DJ Reader, 0.5. Cameron Thomas and Josh Sweat combining for a sack. And Travis Shaw also getting half a sack. Well, that is somehow weird, but okay. Shaq Thompson, 0.5. And DeForest Buckner, also 0.5. Three interception. Jalen Ramsey, Devondra Campbell, and Byron Jones. Well done, guys. 7-2 current standings in the NFC East. We are topping it. And we're just going to take a quick peek into the overall standings. We are the fourth best overall team. Now, that's what I like to see. We've got a good streak going at the moment. Um, we have the same percentage as the Packers, but they have more points for and way more points against as well. That is strange, but whatever. Uh, we have the same percentile. So I would say Packers, Hawks, and Crusaders are currently very, very good. Uh, the Patriots still have to play a game, so that might change. But really fun at the moment. Really enjoying this. I hope, you, you hope you're enjoying this one as well. Um, if you are, drop me a like. Let me know what you think below in the comments. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of what I'm doing here. Um, and uh, yeah, as always, guys and gals, Thank you so much for being here and see you next time.